Hey guys, you know, it's been a little bit since I've done a video. I'm been in some of my headspace of dealing with my own kind of things that I need to deal with. Um, things that are difficult for me. Things that, you know, as a family that we are dealing with. And sometimes it's not fun. Sometimes it's very difficult. We have to go through a process of different, you know, equations of how we are dealing with certain aspects of our life. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail of what's going on, just because it's personal, private matters. But, you know, I am, you know, human being. I have emotions, I have feelings, I go through different stages of how I emotionally deal with things. I also have issues like with chronic pain and I am getting treatment with ketamine and I'm thankful for that because one of the effects with that treatment is that it does help in helping with my mental um, issues like with my depression, my anxiety, and all of that. You know, um, when we go through very anxious and different periods of our adult life, it is very, it can be very traumatic, especially when you are someone like me that strives diligently, that wants to have that control, that um, that just that strong avenue of looking at when I look into our lives it looks perfect everything is perfect we have the perfect house it looks perfect on the inside Everything is perfect. And when you have crisis situations that happen, it puts those little cracks in there and it puts those little chips and kind of like a windshield. You call Safe Light and they try to patch that up put that little ceiling in there and you think, oh, it's fixed. And you move on. But there are times that that sealant doesn't fix it. Rick and I have done so much sealant and it just doesn't fix. And so we are working to 
do what we know and you know the great thing is is that through all of the outcomes we look at the foundation that we have as a family and we take those building blocks and you rebuild you know I'm I'm hard headed I'm stubborn I I I I'm a perfectionist I am strong-willed I tend to think that maybe I'm always right that it's either you know Mike's way and that's the one way um, and I only know how to go into a singular mode in a crisis and that is I have to protect everyone everyone goes above me and I don't take care of me and over the last um, three years um, I've done a lot of taking care of other people we've actually Rick and I have you know not finance not we've taken care of a lot of other people the best thing that we've done is you know taking care of mom and helping her in with all this process of with after dad but we attempted to help another person and it financially just came back and bit us in the ass majorly and you know we've had to you know take a lot of lessons learned and I've come to realize that I cannot save everybody uh, you know, I tried to think that in my family, um, in my one little unit of my mom, my dad, and I don't talk a whole lot about my, my sister because um, there's a lot of pain and anger, resentment. An outright hatred because of her actions but I spent a better part of over a decade and um, trying to drop my life and save her save her from herself save her from just being that statistic of what you see happen to upper middle class 
white kids when drugs take over. The two things that in that period that we were able to save are my nephew who is with his dad and I'm so proud of and my beautiful daughter and no matter the issues that Anna has because of what my sister's actions were while pregnant and there's a lot of resentment and hate and anger because of that and that protection mode for Anna will never ever leave me you know you have to cut those ties and realize that there are things in life that you have to just say goodbye to just are and those are hard those are hard lessons you know and it kind of brings me to where my family is in dealing with hard things that we are dealing with today and it's interesting in how I have to try to process things and the realizations of my own inner demons and my own inner thoughts and my own inner um, abilities to just um, need to rectify the um, things that we're having to do. Just like I should be happy that I got a brand new car. It was what um, our attorneys told us to do. And I should be overjoyed because I got pretty much everything I wanted. This beautiful color, things that I wanted. And I was able to get my payment, you know, cut more than in half. Rick was able to do the exact same thing. He was happy and he was able to, he posted on Facebook. And for me, I just, I have felt Torn because there are a few people that do know what we're going going through and I have I've been torn because I don't want people to be like well how can you be going through something as you are and then you're getting this and you know if when you and I'm just like, you know, it's, it's understandable. And I, I know I'm, I'm extremely 
satisfied with what I have now and I am overjoyed that you know we are able to save <laughs> an incredible amount of money and I can be like okay this is why this is how and but there will be those that will just criticize and for me I'm just like I don't want to do that because I don't want people to look down upon me I know it's all in my head and I'm doing this video and maybe I'll post it and maybe I don't I don't know maybe I'll use it as therapy of myself or send it to my therapist I don't know it's we've got I've got a lot to work through but just know people Mike actually is a really uh, a human being those who actually know me really well can attest to that um I Actually, you know, um, it's, it was funny. I've, I've not worked in my office physically for, um, at my office building physically for seven years. And, um, we, once the coronavirus started, um, they started implementing some different things and we started using Zoom and I, um, actually started connecting with some people on our, our team. I... You know, I didn't really know, know them, but I actually started to connect and I, it's nice to be able to actually say, I have some friends at work. Um, When you guys see this, if you guys see this video, you guys will know who you are. Um, I adore you guys. You guys are, you guys um, inspire me um, because I, when I work, and it, it really was. I worked very much in solitude for the last seven years. I didn't really interact with the team because I just did my job. I worked to overachieve because I was remote. I didn't want people to think that is, you know, I was this faceless name in Skype and in emails. So all I needed to do was do my job a hundred times better than everybody else so I could prove my worth. And that to me is what I had to do. And then we had this pandemic and I, um, and don't get me wrong, our 
manager has been so gracious to invite me to things and I because of some physical attributes because of you know some botched back surgeries and stuff I have made some choices that I wouldn't attend just because of that but um you know you guys are you guys are you know an amazing group of guys that have really kind of cracked through something that um is um something I haven't really had in a long, long time since I started Dell. Well, now that I, you guys know where I work, but in 14 years, I'm working on my 15th year at my company. Um, and I absolutely love the company I work for. They have gone out of the way to take care of us during this time. But I will say in this last six months and you know Connor, Adam, Chad, and Mo, Clara, you guys have really kind of broken through a shell that really just inspires me to, you know, work to want to be a part of the team in a different way. A more um, full way. And you know, I actively will just reach out to you guys and be like, hey, how are you doing? I normally just have never done that in the last seven years. I've always just been isolated, um, alone, um, you know, some of the longer term veterans that we have had on our team would, you know, yeah, they would ask me, could I back you up or something? And yeah, I would, but, um, now it's, I, I can, I call you guys friends because that's what I think about you guys. You guys actually are, I enjoy logging on and being able to reach out and say, hey, how are you doing? Having a Zoom call, seeing, you know, Adam seeing your puppy, Connor seeing little Harper, um, Chad just talking, and Mo just, you are my crazy Muslim brother that has this amazing outlook of life that I have got your back no matter what because you are such an incredible, incredible human being. And since I first met you when you started Dell, 
have been such a, an amazing, an amazing person. Um, so, and Adam, you're a sweetheart. Absolute, such a sweetheart. And I'm so glad I'm not the only gay on the team anymore. <laughs> I felt like for a long time, if you, if anybody has ever seen the show Little Britain, I really was the only gay in the village. I really was, except I was not going to be wearing that, um, really god-awful, um, spandex little outfit going into the bar, but on our team, I really was the only gay in the village, just saying. But Adam, you are such a sweetheart, and I enjoy our conversations, and, but... <sighs> Anyway, this has been just a rambling video, and it's kind of been just one that I, I don't know where I was going with it, and why, but I just needed to get a lot of stuff just out there. <laughs> but just know that... At the end of the day, you may see things and wonder, man, Mike and Rick are going through a lot, or man, why are they doing this, but they're saying that, or, you know, what the heck. I'm just going to say this. want to know, talk to me, talk to Rick, or if we want you to know, we'll tell you. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going through a lot, and if I, if I really want to confide in you, I will, but just know, I am partially mentally just a wreck and so is Rick. Anna needs prayers. She desperately needs your prayers. Um, we are trying to figure out what to do for school um, and we have only just a few days left to make this choice. only a few days and I really were just really don't know so at the end of the day even though this is a rambling all over the thing video and I've covered a shitload of stuff this is just me this is my, this is how my brain's working at the moment. Because when it goes into this type of what I call protectionary crisis mode, it is all over the place. But it's going to be okay. <laughs> We're going to be okay. And will be glad if we can just get this fucking virus under control because I'm over it. My daughter's over it. My husband's over it. My mom's over it. And frankly, come November 3rd, if I have to crawl over a bunch of fucking rotten bodies because the state of Oklahoma refuses to allow me to vote by mail-in ballot because they want to make it as hard as fucking possible. I will. 
because I am not going to allow that orange fucking Cheeto another freaking term in office. Because I will vote for Joe freaking Biden if he is tumbling down a freaking hill with boulders just falling behind him. And Lucille and zombies chasing him. And he's going over rusty barbed wire and razor blades and broken glass. Because I do not want that incompetent, sorry ass bastard in office again for another four years because our country cannot survive it. That was my political moment for the day. This is Michael. I love you guys. Thank you for listening to this massive ramble of whatever I had out here. All of these opinions are all mine. They reflect nothing on the company I work for, any of my friends and family. These are all my opinions. So, in that, I love you guys. I need to go finish drinking my coffee. And it's time for me to work. I love you.